heart and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, the power of the Holy Spirit will come into you. When he spoke the name of Jesus, he was speaking the end result. He said, be made whole. Hi, I'm Reverend Victoria Fury. So glad that you joined me today on Times of Refreshing. The presence of the Lord is to heal you, to restore you, to bring you into fellowship with the Father. That's the desire of God, the prayer that Jesus prayed before he went to the cross. He said, Father, that they will know you and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent, for this is eternal life. Eternal life is to know the Father, to know Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Jesus came into this world to do the will of the Father. He came into this world not to condemn anyone, but to save you. And to save you was demonstrating God's mercy and compassion for every human being upon the earth on Calvary's cross. Jesus took capital punishment for every person's sin upon the cross. And sin was judged and it was destroyed at the cross. And with the shedding of his blood, he remitted everyone's transgression and iniquity that when we repent of our sin and acknowledge that we have gone our own direction of life and repent is to reconsider, it's to turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the Savior. And he remitted sin not to, not to have sin remembered anymore. So his blood blotted out all sin. But there's a requirement, and that requirement is repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ because he is the one that laid his life down on the cross and shed his blood to remit sin and to forgive you through the remission of all sin by his blood. And he was buried. God the Father raised him from the dead to justify you freely under the Father, declare you righteous, to call you sons and daughters of God. That's why the Word of God says, Come out from among, you, among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself. And you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. God created you for his glory. You're his prized possession. He loves you. He has plans for you. And those plans for you is through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came that he might live in you. And he lives in you by the person of the Holy Spirit. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, the Spirit of God's Son enters into your heart by the Holy Spirit and you're born of His Spirit. The desires of God begin to fill your heart. The joy of the presence of God enters your heart by the Holy Spirit. The peace of God enters your heart by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, My peace I give you, no man can give you. The peace that I give you shall be in you. The joy that I give you shall be in you. It shall be a well of water springing up unto eternal life. God's compassions begin to fill your heart. The desires of God begin to fill your spirit. Your, there's a heart change inside. 
Before you come to Christ, you've gone your own direction. and Nothing seemed to satisfy. Nothing seemed to satisfy. There was an emptiness inside your heart. To know God is to repent and turn to Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. And there's no other mediator. You can't go to any person upon the earth to get to God. You can't go to a prophet to get to God. You can only go through the person of Jesus Christ, receiving him as Lord and Savior because he was sent forth from the Father. He had a commandment what to say and what to speak. And that commandment was an everlasting commandment. But he had a plan. God had a plan to redeem you from this life and to redeem your life from destruction, to redeem your life from the grave. And that was through Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And Jesus accepts you in the beloved. His love was demonstrated at the cross. He commended his love towards you. While we were dead in our sins, Christ Jesus died for you. It was God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Jesus Christ, he is the Messiah. He is the Lord. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's full of mercy. He's full of truth. He's full of power. God the Father highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth and declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus came that he might live in you. And that's through the person of the Holy Spirit. Because when he sat down at the right hand of the Father, he poured out the Holy Spirit upon the earth. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because people don't believe in Jesus Christ. Of righteousness because he went to the Father, you see him no more. A judgment, the prince of this world is judged. When you receive Jesus, you are receiving redemption, salvation, deliverance, healing, preservation, and soundness of mind. He will give you a sound mind. He will deliver you of physical illnesses. He will deliver you in your soul. He will heal the broken areas of your heart, areas of your heart where you have been violated and you have been hurt and you have been wounded. He's the restorer of the soul. He will heal the stroke of the wound inside of you. There's many here today watching this program and you have lost people in your lives. People have rejected you. People have turned their back on you. And you've had a lot of brokenness in your heart and in your life because of rejection. Jesus was rejected of man. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid as our faces from him. He was despised and rejected of man. See, the word of God said, as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even those that believe on his name. When you believe on the name of Jesus, that he is the salvation of God, God's plan of redemption and salvation for your life, Eternity, eternal life enters into your heart. Everlasting life enters into your heart. He gives you a brand new heart, a brand new nature. That nature is a divine nature. He puts inside of you the gift 
of his son, the gift of grace, the gift of righteousness. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away and behold, all things become new. He makes you new on the inside. What you tried to do in your own strength, it only caused frustration in your life. But what Jesus does on the inside of you brings healing and deliverance and preservation. It brings joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. He puts a song in your heart to praise him. Before you couldn't praise the Lord, but all of a sudden when you receive him, the praises of God enter your heart by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. And the Bible says that his love is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit when you receive him. When you receive him, God opens your eyes to the scriptures and he begins to show you himself. He begins to illuminate the eyes of your understanding of his ways, just like the prophet David. He was a prophet, priest, and king. And he said, Lord, teach me your ways. Lead me in your truth and teach me. See, David... He had a heart after God. He was, his heart was after God. He sinned against God, but he cried out to God. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not thy Holy Ghost from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Uphold me with thy free and willing spirit, that I may teach transgressors thy ways, and that sinners will be converted unto you. To be turned to the Lord is taking heed to his word. When you take heed to his word, you begin to cleanse your way. You in and of yourself cannot cleanse your way. You cannot create an, in your own self a clean heart. You, no matter how many times you've been into a church or how many times you've tried to read the Bible and didn't understand, you're trying it in your own effort and your own works. Works cannot save you. It's by His grace that saves you. Grace is God's divine ability, his divine favor to save you. When he saves you and you receive him, the spirit of God's son enters into your spirit by the Holy Spirit and that you know that you know that you have eternal life. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abides on him. As Jesus stated in John 17, before he went to the cross, Father, that they will know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent, for this is eternal life. He already pronounced it. This is eternal life. There's people watching today, and you've come from another country. This is the first time you've joined in with Times of Refreshing program, and you've never heard the gospel presented this way before. You came from another country, and you had idol worship there. You created things with your own hands, and you would bow down and worship. God does not dwell in in a temple made with hands. God does not dwell with something that you create with your own hands and bow down to. God, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word 
was made flesh. That means God was manifested in the flesh. And grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That is God's son. Grace and truth came by him. Jesus came forth from the Father, came into this world, was born of a virgin. And he grew up as a little boy. And he became anointed by the Holy Spirit at the River Jordan. And John the Baptist preached repentance and remission of sin. And people were coming to the River Jordan, being repenting of their sins, being baptized in water. And Jesus came to the Jordan River. And John said, Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. And Jesus went under that water and came up, and the heavens opened up, and the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased to hear him. And the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, and it settled on him like a dove. And he was empowered by the Holy Spirit to do the will of the Father. And the Holy Spirit demonstrated the kingdom of God, demonstrated God's authority, his rulership, his reign, and his dominion upon the earth. He came to do the will of the Father, and the will of the Father was to heal all disease, sickness, to, to deliver people of oppression, demonic activity, and cast out demons. And Jesus went into the synagogue full of the Holy Spirit after he came out of the wilderness, being tempted of the devil, and he overcame the devil by the word of God, it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou serve. And when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, Luke 4, 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that have been bruised, to preach recovery to sight of the blind, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he said, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And he quoted it out of Isaiah 61. So the word of God was demonstrated in the nation of Israel with the power of God's glory. And the word of God says, as many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God, even those that believed on his name. And his word came with authority. They recognized that his, his word, when he preached, had authority. It had demonstration of the kingdom of God. People that had unclean spirits began to Cry out loud, we know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. And he would say, shut up and come out. And the spirits would come out of people and they were being delivered. He was anointed to deliver those that were held captive at the devil's will. And the will of God was being demonstrated by casting the demons out of people because they were possessed with a, a demon spirit in their spirit, soul, and body. When someone is demon-possessed, it's con controlling them, their spirit, their soul, and their physical body. And we see this in the life of the man at Gadara. Now, if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open your Bibles to Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. 
And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus came them leave, gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out, entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And there were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had for him. And for all the men did marvel. See, that is compassion in action. That is the compassion of God to deliver you. There's people that have mental insanity, mental illness, and that is a part that is under the curse where Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. He redeemed us from mental illness. He redeemed us from mental insanity. He redeemed us of that. There's people watching here today, you've had fear all your life. And you might have been verbally abused as a child, physically abused, violated. And fear entered your heart at a young age. And that fear brought terror and torment. That at night you could not sleep well. You had to have lights on in your room to sleep. And you were tormented by the spirit of fear. A spirit of fear is a demon spirit. And it will torment your mind that you feel like you're going crazy and you feel confused and you're afraid to step out and do things in life. Well, Jesus Christ, he doesn't give you a spirit of fear, but he gives you love, power, and a sound mind. Today is your day of deliverance. There's many watching today. You've been bound by the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is a spirit of bondage. It's a yoke. It's a yoke around your neck, around your mind. That's all you think is fearful thoughts, afraid to do things. And, and your thought patterns are confusing. Jesus will set you free today. Jesus will deliver you today. This is your day to be delivered by Jesus Christ personally. When you repent today and acknowledge Jesus Christ 
that he came to do the will of the Father, that he gave his life a holy sacrifice on the cross, that he shed his blood to forgive you, that he took 39 lashes upon his back for the healing of all mental illness, sickness, disease, infirmity, and pain. And by his wounds, his stripes upon his back, you were healed. It's the will of God to heal you. It's the will of God to deliver you. God raised Jesus from the dead to give you eternal life. You call upon the name of Jesus and receive him today. And God's going to deliver you inside your spirit and, in, and your mind. Your mind will be cleansed. Your mind will be washed with the water of the word. See, God's word is truth. God cannot lie. He's a God of integrity. He's a God that performs his word. He watches over his word to perform it. This is your day to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. This is your day to be delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon his name today. And he will break the bondage of that spirit of fear that has tormented you all your life. And he will deliver you. And the peace of God will enter your heart by the Holy Spirit. And you will be set free. And I want to pray with you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those watching today. I thank you, Heavenly Father for your delivering power of the Holy Spirit, entering into their homes, entering into their lives. I take authority and dominion over the spirits of fear, spirits of torment, spirits of pain, and I command spirits of insanity to leave people in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. I declare the deliverance of the Lord upon your mind in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for delivering them from spirits of fear and torment and pain. Father, I thank you for healing people's bodies out there today. There's someone that you've had a lung condition for a long time. Lay your hands on your lung. The hand of the Almighty is coming into your home today. The hand of God is releasing his power over your lung today. You are healed in Jesus' name. If you would like to support Times of Refreshing, please make donations to Victory Christian Church, care of Times of Refreshing, at 112 Pine Street, West Union, Iowa, 52175. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.